Try making a list of 10 of the greatest NBA coaches ever. Is Pat Riley on it? Good, you did well. The older generation will mostly remember him by winning four titles with the Showtime Lakers of the 80s. It was around that time he gained his iconic status. Those who became NBA fans more recently will probably associate him with the Miami Heat and their championship run in 06 charged by young D. Wade, Shaq and others. But here's just a small reminder of his accolades. He's won 9 NBA championships, coach of the year 3 times and compiled a 1010 to 694 NBA record. The only time Riley didn't make the playoffs was in his last season with the Heat as he ranked second in playoff wins with 171. So yeah, Riley is without a doubt one of the greatest coaches ever. Every player who played for him will tell you the same. Another thing they'll tell you is this. Pat Riley gave the best locker room speeches ever. He had a way of motivating his guys like no other. Whether it was pre-game, halftime or post-game, players were ready to go to war for him. Riley always had a way of lifting them up when they were down. Remember the 06 finals when the Heat got back to Miami trailing 2-0 in the series? And remember them winning the next 4 games to win the championship? Sure the players deserve most of the credit, but according to Shaq, Riley's speech made them believe it was possible to pull off such an upset. Well not a speech exactly. He came in with a bucket full of ice and he said, Do you guys believe I can hold my head in this bucket of ice for 3 minutes? Most guys were like, I don't think he can do it. And he did it. He almost died, but he did it. So the first thing you have to do is believe. So Riley basically risked his life to send a message. That's how involved he was. That's how intense he was. It was the ultimate hype moment that left no one indifferent. It resulted in a historic comeback as the Heat won the series in 6, winning the organization's first ever championship. However, it seems that's not the only Pat Riley and the Ice Bucket story. I guess he had a thing for Ice Buckets. Kinda weird, but it worked. The second story was shared by Eddie House. He wasn't around when it happened, but it sure does sound like something Riley would do. And this one is even more epic. He had phenomenal speeches. The best. You would want to run through the wall head first. It'd give you something every game, but it depended on the type of game, how good it was gonna be. I wasn't there for this, but the vets told me that one time, after a comeback against Detroit, he ducked his head in and kept it there. He got it out and yelled, TO THE LAST SECOND, and everybody went crazy. Now imagine your 60-ish year old coach doing something like that. No one is immune to that type of stuff. It's the ultimate way of motivating your team, and that's what Pat was, the ultimate motivator. The NBA's mad genius. Rightfully so, Coach Riley is one of the most successful NBA personas. He's the only guy with the bragging rights of winning the title as a player, assistant, coach, and GM. Whatever Riley was doing, the recipe for success was always the same. Hard work and dedication. He has that old school, almost military approach. It's something players have struggled with. But the ones who endured it ended up with a ring on their finger. But it wasn't easy, not by a long shot. The players who played for him all say the same thing. When we were winning, things were great. But when things went south, it was hell. Eddie House yet again testifies in favor of Pat Savage. As he recalls Tim Hardaway's plan of talking back to Pat, backfiring in a spectacular fashion. We're in Vancouver, we're losing at half. Pat comes in and tears up the locker room. We go back and win, whoop him. We're on the bus and Tim was like, I'm tired of all that negative shit. He was like, watch me, I'ma say something tomorrow. Watch. Bear in mind, this was Eddie's rookie year, the 2001 season. Tim was 34 at the time, and being an established veteran that he was, it wasn't crazy to assume he has the rights to say something. That's how the NBA works, especially nowadays. Guys have the right to speak up, and player-coaches relationships are much more on a friendly note. But this is Pat Riley we're talking about. You know that wasn't going to be the case. He didn't care about who you are. He didn't care about your status in the NBA, nor about how much money you've made. All he cared about was the authority, and Tim felt it on his own skin as he tried to talk back to Pat. Next day we're at practice, we come in. Pat does this thing where he sits us down and talks to us. He goes, okay guys, let's bring it in. And Tim's like, ho ho, I got something to say. He said, I think you're just too negative all the time. You don't gotta be so negative. We came back and won. You ain't gotta do it like that. The whole time he's saying that, Pat is walking back and forth, the same outfit all the time. He's walking back and forth shaking his head. And Tim was done. And Pat was like, Yeah, okay, that's probably the biggest bullshit I ever heard in my life. You see, that's the problem. You're either in, and I swear he jumped probably 8 feet sideways, or you're out. 
You're just mad because they took your raggedy ass out of the game. Everybody's like, ooh. And Tim was like, I ain't raggedy. It's safe to say Tim never tried to talk back to Riley again. He's just that type of guy. You're not going to change him. Whatever you do, he's going to do things the way he wants things done. There's no way around it. It really is you're either in or you're out type of mentality. But that's not where Pat Savageness ends, as Eddie House blessed us with another legendary Pat story. So Ricky Davis breaks his foot in practice. The whole time he's supposed to be coming for treatment, he's not showing up to practice and he's not showing before the games. He's just staying at home and he's getting fined every day. He has no idea. Every single day. I don't know how long did he miss. Finally, after coming off a road game, Pat's like, hey guys, we're gonna take a little detour. As we got off, we realized we're in Atlantic City. We get off the bus and Ron Culp, who was a trainer at the time, is sitting there with an envelope saying, hey guys, compliments of Ricky Davis. Everybody on the team got like $1,000 compliments of Ricky Davis. Ricky had no idea until we got back and we were like, thank you, man. Classic Riley. He's known as the guy who requires players to be professional. If that means showing up for practice even though you broke your foot, you better show up for practice. It's about taking care of one's profession. All the savageness aside, Pat Riley is arguably the NBA's greatest mad genius. Because even though he was a hard ass, he truly was a basketball mastermind who respected hard work and dedication above all. A claim we're sure Udonis Haslam would agree with, as he recalled a play during a heat scrimmage that changed his life forever. For me, it was the simplest play that defined my career early. Who I was and what type of person I was. Practicing one day, we go in 5 on 5. We go on live, shot goes off, and the ball bounces off, rolls towards half court. Everybody stops, I just chase it and grab it. Coach Riley blows the whistle and asks me, why didn't you stop? At this point, I think I did something wrong. I was like, nobody blew the whistle, the play was still going. Literally something as small as that was huge and catapulted in my career. Later that day, Riley called Haslam into his office to let him know he made the team and will be playing for the Miami Heat. 857 games later, Udonis Haslam is a three-time NBA champion and banked in over 60 million in career earnings. And Pat Riley? With his nine championship titles and three Coach of the Year awards, is without a doubt one of the greatest coaches in NBA history. Is Pat Riley a mad genius or what? Let us know what you think in the comments, guys. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel for more great basketball content. Thank you for watching.